So in 12a, we introduce you guys to the rules. Brad, follow along with your textbook, please. The rules of operations with surds. So we've got multiplying surds, adding surds together. Um, so that's all sort of, this is all going to be assumed knowledge for year 12, okay? So all those skills there in 12a. In 12b, we've got index laws. Index laws are so important. Um, and I think the thing about index laws is, right, people are very good at recognising, oh, 3 to the 4 times 3 to the 2. I know that that equals 3 to the power of 4 plus 2, that I can add those powers together. And that gives me 3 to the 6. People are very good at that, but they're not so good at going back the other way. Because you can do that. If you start with something like this, you can recognise how oh, it goes to that. And it does go to that. And that can be a useful skill as well. Okay, so index laws, very, very important. Really, really important. We've learned them for a long time. Then we get into scientific notation. Um, I think we touched on that recently when we were talking about probability. So we've said, so I'm doing exam marking at the moment. All right, so, you know, 1 times 10 to the minus 7. That is an appropriate answer in scientific notation. What isn't is if you put it out like it has in the calculator, something like that. That is not appropriate notation. So you're absolutely fine to use scientific notation. Um, and then if you're going to convert that to a decimal, you go seven zeros, and then that number, and you put the decimal place after the first zero. So scientific notation. We've got rational indices, so again, just an application of index laws. Just move along. We've got algebraic expansion and factorization. So the same rules for expansion apply. It's just distributive law or a bit of foil going on there. And then we're applying some index laws as well. We're adding and subtracting the powers. When we've got factorization, it gets a little bit trickier. That's where we're doing this, isn't it? That's where we're recognizing the index law going back the other way. So let's do this example here together. We have three to the n plus two plus three to the n, and we want to factorize it, okay? What we should recognize here is that this number here, three to the n plus two, is equal to three to the two times 3 to the n, isn't it? That's the backwards index law, okay? If you go forward, that's what you get. If you go back the other way, that's what we get. And then we're looking at these two terms and we're saying, oh, excuse me, we're saying what is common between these two? 3 to the n, let's pull that out the front. And so you'd be left with 3 squared plus 1, which is 10, isn't it? 9 plus 1 is 10. So really you've got 10 lots of 3 to the n. Okay, that can be factorised in that. Okay, so that was in factorization. The other trick we did there as well is when we had something like, I'll just pull this example out. We've got 4 to the x plus 9 times 2 to the x uh, plus 18. And we recognize that is 2 to the x squared, right? And we said, why don't we do something like let a equal 2 to the x. So then we can see it as a quadratic. We're going to have a squared plus 9a plus 18, and something like that. It's a lot easier for us to see how to factorise it than when it's written like this or like, like, um, like that. All right, so that's still there, recognising we can write A. Everyone remembering that? Yep, good, so good, good. Okay, we had graphs of exponential functions, so really relying on our calculator a bit and asymptotes there. So now I'm on to I, where we looked at growth and decay. And we touched on this very briefly because we were G-solving on our calculator there, Brad. Um, and we did do a fair bit of this when we got into logarithms as well. Okay, moving on, that's there's growth, there's decay. And we didn't look at Euler's number as part of our course, uh, but it'd definitely be part of it next year. So let's get into chapter 13 then. We've got logarithms in base 10. We'll just touch on these very quickly. So let's do two examples. Okay, we have log of 100. This is a logarithm in base 10. We know it's base 10 because there's no number written there. Okay, so that means by default, by convention, it's base 10. So we need to express this as a power of 10. So 100 is 10 squared. And once we've expressed it as a power of 10, it simplifies to the exponent. All right, which in this case is 2. Over here, we've got logarithm in base 2. Uh, so we need to express this number as a power of 2. So this is 2 to the power of 3. Once we've expressed it as a power of that base, it simplifies to the exponent. Okay, so that's logarithms in base 10. That's in 13a. Logarithms in base a is in 13b. 
So that's all that kind of skill. Then we've got laws of logarithms, okay? Again, again, um, these can go back the other way as well. We've seen if we have log 10 plus log three, okay? That's gonna be log of 10 times three, okay? That's how we collect it, isn't it, log 30? So we can go like that, but we can also go back the other way. In particular, so this is a bit of a forecast, Next year, we're going to be looking at graphs of like logarithms, okay? So we're going to have the graph of log x, okay? And we could have the graph of log of 5x as well, couldn't we? Log of 5x. And we know log 5x is log of 5 times x. And so you can go back the other way, right? We can recognize it's log of 5 times x, which is log of 5 plus log of x. Alright, so we can go back the other way, bit of foresight there. Uh, so log laws, that's in 13C. 13D is natural logarithm, so we did it, but again, not part of the year 11 content, won't be in the exam. 13E, we get onto solving equations with logarithms, and in growth and decay, we're using those same skills as well. So let's just talk quickly about how we can solve an equation using logarithms. Let's say we've got um, 5, what about 2 times 5 to the power of x equals 20. Alright, so we need to isolate this term by itself, isn't it? We want, we want to sort of get x by itself, so that means we need to get rid of everything around x. So first we're going to divide both sides by 2, so we'll have 5 to the x is 10. Alright, and then once we've got it simplified like this, we can put a log on both sides. What's a log? It's like a function with like a square root, or you can think of it as something like that. So we've got log 5 to the x equals log of 10. Okay, so that means this x can come straight out the front, doesn't it? So we're going to have x log 5. That's why we do this, equals log 10. What is log 10? One. One, spot on, right? Log 10 is 1. Uh, it's a logarithm in base 10. 10 by itself is 10 to the power of 1, so it would simplify to 1. Okay, we could leave it as log 10, but let's get in the habit of recognizing those forms. And so then we've got x is going to be 1 on top of log 5. And we move it over the other side, and we've successfully isolated x. That's the exact solution. Remember, we've got to look for those words. If it says exact, it wants it expressed as a logarithm, as a sur, as a root, whatever it is. Um, but if it says the three significant figures, then we can put that in our calculator and convert it accordingly. All right, so that's a good summary of logarithms. Okay. So we'll stop there. Uh, when we come back from recess, we'll talk a bit about calculus, but maybe let's focus on a bit about logarithms and come around and see if you have any questions. Anyway. <coughs>